Brad Hoiberg brings in a great transfer class after having a solid season at Nebraska. With the program going in the right direction, Hoiberg brought in five transfers and two freshmen to the team. I'll go over film of all seven newcomers. Stay tuned to the end to see what transfers will have the biggest impact this season for Nebraska. Eli Rice is a 6'7 wing ranked number 195 in the 2023 class. He played a post-grad year at IMG, but he averaged 17.2 points, 7.1 rebounds, and 2.4 assists a game during his senior season. Rice is newer to the game, having only played a few years of organized basketball. The first thing that stands out is just that Rice is an athlete. He has good positional size as eventually being most likely a 3 on the wing that can use his body to get into the paint. He moves well overall and he's fluid with his movements. This allows him to get to the best part of his game, his drives. Rice found success being able to use his first step and his body to create leverage when driving. His athleticism then pops by allowing him to finish near the rim when getting into the paint. I think the touch on some of the contested shots near the rim will need to improve, but I expect that to happen as he just gets more reps. Rice showed some level of comfort facilitating the ball. His initial reaction is to score, but he showed he's capable of kicking out to open guys on the perimeter while driving. This could lead him to running some pick and roll reps eventually. Rice doesn't have a smooth jumper, but he seemed to have confidence when shooting it. It doesn't seem pretty fluid at all, and I think it'll ultimately be the swing skill for him. Rice projects as a solid defender for many of the same reasons that he can become a good driver. I don't think I expect Rice to get much playing time this season, but I'm very interested to see how he develops during his time at Nebraska. Matar Diop is a 6'9 forward that was unranked in the 2023 class. He's the latest addition to Nebraska, having signed in late July. Diop last played at Keystone Athletic Academy, and he spent time at the NBA Academy Africa. Diop is a longer big that can move pretty well overall. He's still a bit raw, but the upside is there as a big that can help in the paint on defense and be a rim threat on offense. Diop has spent most of his time on offense around the rim, whether it be in the dunker spot or as a roller to the rim. He has a super high motor, and this leads him to almost always crashing the glass hard. He's very willing to be physical and really compete down low, although he did tend to get pushed off of his spots at times. Diop wants to be a drop defender in pick and roll, but he did show on a few occasions that he's capable of moving on the perimeter if needed. I'll be interested to see if that holds true even at the Big Ten level. Diop didn't really take perimeter shots, but his free throws looked really solid to me, something that'd be very beneficial. Diop's another freshman for Nebraska that I don't think will get a ton of playing time this season, but I think there will be plenty of room for him to develop moving forward. Aaron Eulis is a 6'3 point guard transferring from Iowa. He averaged 6.1 points and 2.1 assists a game during his junior season with the Hawkeyes. Eulis is a solid point guard overall. He isn't going to be a lead on offense and defense, but he's shown that he can run an offense some if needed or be a potential perimeter defender. He wasn't very efficient a player last year, shooting 31.9% from 3 and 44.2% from 2, but he did average 2.1 assists compared to only 1.1 turnovers a game. Eulis can make some plays with the ball in his hands, whether it be getting to his pull-up or driving and kicking off of a pick and roll. He's very quick, which allows him to get into the lane some, and on defense he does a pretty decent job staying in front. I think he did struggle getting around screens at times though. Eulis has a bit of explosive pop at his size, which he shows off more when there's no true rim protector in the game. He struggled converting at the rim, however, when there were bigs there. Eulis took more pull-ups than catch-and-shoot threes, but he seemed comfortable doing either. He can be a guy that spaces out or takes some on-ball action if needed. I found that he does tend to favor dribbling with his left hand, which I found interesting. When Eulis is in a facilitating role, I think he's at his best. He's a guard that I think naturally wants to create for others, and some of his best strengths lie in being able to get the ball to people for them to score. Being in the backcourt with Tomonaga, this should benefit him well as he looks to be the potential starting point guard this season for Nebraska. Josiah Lick is a 6'8 big transferring from New Mexico. He averaged 8.4 points and 7.3 rebounds a game during his senior season. Alec returns home as he's from Lincoln, Nebraska. Alec reminds me a lot of Derek Walker, the recent graduate from Nebraska. He's a higher energy big that can operate as a handoff hub either as the 4 or 5 on the floor. He has good decision making with it, knowing when to keep or not. He's very comfortable in the post, wanting to go over his right shoulder a lot. Alec averaged 1.139 points per possession on post-ups last season, putting him in the 94th percentile. He moves well at his size, but is also a strong player that won't be bullied down low. Alec shot 73% at the rim last season, which was one of the best in the country, and that's where he took most of his shots. He's a hustle player that will be willing to run the floor or crash the glass hard and cause some issues down low. He moves well defensively, but the one area he lacked is he wasn't an elite rim protector, I thought. He does a good job in drop coverage of forcing pull-ups, however, something that'll fit in at Nebraska. The thing that probably worries me the most is the fit. 
Alec may have to be the four at times, but he isn't a great shooter. It may not matter though, because I think Alec ultimately fits in really well with what Hoiberg wants to do, and he could have plenty of opportunity to do that. Rank Moss is a six foot nine big transferring from Bradley. He averaged 13.8 points, 8.0 rebounds, and 2.4 assists a game during his junior season. Mass can do a bit of everything, and he was the focal point of the Bradley offense. Mass showed that he's a legitimate pick and pop threat, shooting 35.3% from three on 2.3 attempts a game. He's also a very gifted low post scorer. He had 135 post ups last season and shot just under 50% on them, putting him in the 74th percentile. Mass is much better going over his left shoulder than his right shoulder, and that's something that he much prefers doing. He has very good post footwork that allows him to maneuver his way to the rim. I was also impressed with how he handled double teams. Nash showed off some of the passing chops as being able to facilitate both from the top of the key and the post, especially when doubled. He's another big that I think could be a potential handoff hub for Nebraska, allowing guys like Tominaga to fly off of him. My biggest concern with Mass is on the defensive end. He struggles with stronger bigs and he didn't have the best foot speed. He'll need to be able to find a way to be solid on that end, maybe more as a rim protector. Mast has all the offensive tools you could ask for though. He can score in the post, step out to the perimeter, rebound well, and facilitate for others. I think Mast has potential to surprise some people this season while starting for Nebraska. Bryce Williams is a 6'7 wing transferring from Charlotte. He averaged 13.8 points and 5.3 rebounds a game while shooting nearly 40% from three on high volume. Nebraska struggled shooting from the perimeter, and Williams comes in as a guy that'll be elite in that category. He has good size and a release that's very repeatable. Williams doesn't need a ton of space to get up shots, and he showed that he could be a movement shooter as well. He took 48 shots while moving off screen. He averaged 1.192 points per possession, which puts him in the 92nd percentile. Williams was used primarily off ball, having taken 122 catch and shoot threes. However, he flashed some on ball creation as well. He ran 55 pick and rolls. Williams took 76 pull ups and was in the 81st percentile for efficiency on them. He even was able to get to the rim. Williams can be a ball handler if needed, making him pretty versatile on the offensive end. He'll be looking to score more than anything, however. He wasn't the quickest defensively, and he had a hard time staying in front of guards. He'll be a true wing at Nebraska, which could help him out some, but I do hope to see more engagement from him on that end. He's long though, which should fit well with Nebraska's defensive scheme. Williams is a scoring wing that can do it in a variety of ways, even posting up smaller players at times. He'll be a great secondary scoring option on the perimeter, and I think he should have a solid year for the Cornhuskers. Jerron Coleman's a 6'5 combo guard transferring from Ball State. He averaged 14.3 points, 4.9 rebounds, and 3.8 assists a game during his senior season. Coleman's a late addition to Nebraska, transferring in during August. He's a combo guard that can handle the ball if needed, but can also create his own shot. Coleman wants to stay on the perimeter, where he shot 35.2% from three on over six attempts a game. He liked getting to his pull up from three, and a lot of those came in isolation. He was also very comfortable playing off ball and spotting up. He shot slightly better when contested compared to open on catch and shoot threes. Coleman did struggle at the rim last season, shooting under 50% on the year. He's a longer guard, but he doesn't use it well to create separation, which makes it much tougher for him to drive. There's upside defensively because he could be versatile. I found that he was often flat-footed, however, and this allowed opponents to get a lot of space. Coleman can run an offense. He isn't efficient in pick and rolls, but he does a good job of driving on his own and being able to kick from there. He made really quick decisions with the ball, which I think will be important for him to have at Nebraska. Coleman should have the opportunity to start right away. He'll probably be tasked with more primary responsibilities to allow Tominaga to play off ball. If he can buy into the defensive system, Coleman should be a great fit for Nebraska. Thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Click here for even more Big Ten team breakdowns.